the Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegand, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The Township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heike when the postmaster general informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heike? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heike. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish, but when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Heike. Two miles west of Heike, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore, and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heike and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Grover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heike, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. Here, please. I'm Kathy Sixel and I live at 9716 uh, CTHX Newton and uh, we are also on the home farm although it has not been in the family as long as Richard's and it would be Don's family not my family and uh, I thought it would be nice to get all this history recorded and uh, we have a good committee going they remember a lot of things and we have a special guest tonight uh, Mr. Jacoby and we're going to jog his memory also. Very good thank you. And who do you have here, please? I'm Florence Chris from 350 East Washington. And I let Wally talk. He grew up in the village. I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and who do we have here, please? I'm Walter Chris. I grew up in the village. I live at 350 East Washington. I'm a longtime resident of the village. Okay. Uh, if I may ask, were you born here also? I was born in Cleveland, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Lady here who uh, would like to introduce herself and some, give us some information, please. My name is Diana Kolb. I live at 13907 Center Road, Cleveland. I am married to Bill Kolb, who was born here in Cleveland, and his father and his grandfather, I believe. But I have I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> and I'm working on some history a little bit about the Hike Bay Tavern. Okay. And I brought lots of pictures. <laughs> Good. We'll, we will look forward to seeing those. And who do we have here, please? I'm Marie Pippert. I was born out here. Okay. Probably die out here too. <laughs> 1051 Linden Street, apartment 108. Okay. And uh, that's all. That's all. Now, <laughs> Marie, let's see where you were uh, where you were born. Uh, that was on Main Street, uh, Washington. Oh, I was born right across from the telephone uh, telephone company. About that's where I was born. Okay. 1914. 1914. Washington, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> And we've got a young lady here who would yeah. like to introduce herself. I'm Dorothy Anderson, and I, I live at 220 Lincoln Avenue, the house that I was uh, born in and moved away from and have come back to live in there. And um, I'm interested in the history of the area, and I also belong to Centerville Settlement and membership chairman of that. Very good. Thank you. And we've got a new person here this evening, and if you'd like to introduce himself, please. I'm Frederick Jacoby. I grew up on the farm three miles uh, north of the village of Cleveland and spent um, countless hours in Dostler's blacksmith shop, Strotman's store, looking at the penny candy, <laughs> running around Strotman's dance hall, <laughs> in the print shop, Eddie Hintz's store, That's <laughs> and uh, I'm interested. And uh, I live in the city of Antwerp now. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, my name is Jerry O'Neill, and I'm working with this history group and uh, uh, putting out a videotape for them for to be used perhaps in the future, and uh, I enjoy doing it, and I live out at uh, 7301 Range Line Road, and that's in the town of Newton. Thank you. Got a young lady here who has a little something unique to say. Uh, du hast eine Geburtstagheit. Wie alt bist du? I'm asking you how old you are. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> you can see I'm a, I'm a f avid German here. No, I'm 64 years old today. So how old? I'm 64 years old today. Because you don't know how kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 
sing happy birthday. Okay. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gerald. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Is there something to start out with? Um, I was a student in Pleasant Hill School on Union Road back in the 1950s. And Frederick Jacoby came one day and showed slides of a trip that he made when you were in the military, right? Or after? I don't know which trip it was. Anyway, he went to Antarctica. Oh, that was after. It was after, okay. He okay. went to Antarctica, he came around and he showed slides to, to all of the schools, right? In the area. Oh, so I was interested. Yeah, and anyway, he didn't know how much somebody would be affected by that. He, you know, you never know among your audience, you know, what students are going to just eat this up or are going to, you know, change their life or something. Yes. And I don't know what age I was. I must have been fourth grade, fifth grade or something like that. And, and I always looked at the maps on the wall and I always dreamed of traveling to places far away. Okay. But I never knew that I could do that because I never met anybody who had ever been there. You know, all of the people I knew had always been homebodies and lived around the Cleveland area and I never knew that, uh, you know, and I, I always was, I was just dreaming at that point. Well, after his slide presentation, here I saw somebody from my community, from my church, who had actually gone to the bottom of the earth, okay? Okay. And I figured if he could go there, I could go anywhere. And ever since that time, I, am, I was not dreaming anymore. I was a believer and I've been traveling ever since. And I, and I owe that moment of inspiration. And I can remember that up to this day. I can remember thinking that thought in my head when he was showing these slides. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of Frederick Jacoby coming around and, and uh, just giving me that boost in, in my life to get me on my way to being a world traveler or whatever I am today. So Wonderful. I really appreciate it. Good story. Good story. Now, uh, we will go to Kathy, and she has some... Uh, things to direct us a little bit. Um, I'm Kathy Sixel, and this evening we have special topics we're going to be uh, talking about. We have tried to do research, and I think we'll start with Dorothy Anderson, and she is going to tell us about the brewery. Who has some information and some pictures. And identify yourself, please. Uh, I'm Dorothy Anderson, and uh, on the northeast corner of East Washington, there is a, a feature in the village of Cleveland there is a concrete structure, and that was part of the foundation for the brewery that stood at that corner. Okay. And uh, it was built sometime in the 1840s, the first one, but then it was destroyed by fire. And in the 1880s, it was, picked, it was built and looks like this. Okay, just hold that a moment. It was rebuilt in 1890 from the original one. Okay. The Gartsky brothers from Milwaukee obtained the brewery in 1898 and organized it as the Gartsky Brothers Brewing Company. And and here is the uh, copy of the original label. Okay, just hold on a moment, thank you. I just hold on a moment. You got a, a name of, uh, was that a, a the drink or a beer that, that they produced? A label for the beer bottle. Okay, and what does that mean, and uh, how do you pronounce it, first of all, and what does it mean? Enough ice. Uh, have another one. Yeah. Have another one. Just take another one. Yeah. Very good, very and that good. That would be after the Gartsky brothers got hold of it. In, okay. Uh, in, uh, in 1906, my, it was my grandfather. Okay. And uh, Gustav Gartsky took sole possession of the brewery, and he incorporated it in 1900 as the Centerville Brewing Company. Uh, and common and preferred stocks were sold. And it was operated until 1914, and then it was torn down, and uh, bricks were used to build the Mikado Theater, which is in Manitowoc. Wow. Um, when was it torn down? Did you give a date on that? It was torn down in, in July, for, no, that's when, in 1914. Okay. It was torn down. And one side, my mother, uh, used to have to help at, well, as a kid help wash bottles over there in the brewery. Mm -hmm. And she often mentioned that many times she had planned a picnic at the lake or uh, swimming or something like that. And then she'd have her specific toot on the whistle and she had to come home, come back to oh. the brewery and wash bottles. <laughs> One time he says, Oh, no, can't you could have stayed, you know. <laughs> and um, then her cousin, 
remembers that um, they made uh, loads of pickled pig's feet, and I guess that kind of went good with the um, oh, I'm sure. with the beer. Okay. Here's a picture of the mill dam okay. and the Sure Tavern, and here's the in connection with that is here's where the brewery was in Haika. Okay. And then after the um, brewery was torn down, here would be a picture from that corner. Here was it would be. Here's Lake Michigan. And okay, just hold it there a moment. But that's with the brewery gone then. Okay, now that corner. Yeah. Is that the corner where Rutherford's was located at all no, or Rutherford's not? No, Rutherford's would be uh, this other place down here. Okay, just hold it a moment. Okay, thank you. This this corner would be up from the grade school to the south. All right. And then across the street. Okay. Going back to that brewery, is that where that was located or where, what is there now So, in since the brewery is now gone? It's just a pretty much like this picture here. This house is being remodeled. That's the first house just to the uh, southeast oh, of it. Okay. But the spot is still it's just the spot, just the place in the ground. Okay. And, it, and that would be across from where the school was, and we would just be able to go over there and play during the recess. Okay. Okay, thank you. Please. I'm Walter Grass. Hi, Walter. And the house that's standing here now, that's the original house, the bottle house of the brewery. And to the west of it, there's some foundation standing yet. That was the ice machine for the brewery. Okay. And those are still standing today. Okay. And then the brewery was a little bit to the north. The brewery was to the north and east. Okay, and again, this brewery. that was the brewery. That was the brewery. Okay. Thank you, Wally. <laughs> my grandfather at one time was a brewmaster, and my dad worked in the bottle house. Okay. In this bottle house. All right. Now that bottle house and the uh, brewery and this, uh, I think there was another building, were they all kind of connected or not? No. They were not connected? Uh, one company, but One no. company. One but company. Not, not, the buildings were not connected to each other. Oh, okay. So. All right. And then what was the bottle house? It's still there and it's being, well, people have been living in it for ever since, but uh, right. it's being remodeled right now. All right. Very good. Who uh, has a little bit of a um, picture in his mind about what was there? I'm Walter Kress, and the ice house was where the new, where the newer Red Arrow School was, which is sold and is a home today. Okay, and then you mentioned something about horses. I do not know where the horse barn was. Okay, that I never found but out. there was a horse barn. There was a horse barn at one time. Okay, yes. and that was used by the brewery. Yes. Okay. Thank you the board and he's going to identify himself and tell us what he's about. Uh, Richard Wiegand and I'm going to attempt to locate this brewery with the help of Walter Kress <laughs> <laughs> or correction by him. <clears throat> um, this is the village of Cleveland, the main part of it, and this is Heika along the lake. And this is East Washington Avenue and this is uh, Beach Street right here and I believe the brewery is located in this corner. Well, there's a house in the corner here right now, and the brewery would have been, what, to the north and east a little north, bit? North and east. Somewhere in this block right here. in that area. And Rutherford's, uh, or Strachman's, the dance hall and the hotel were down in the hill area. in this area here. Right on the corner. Right on the corner? Right on the corner. Okay. Not farther in. Well, there was some structures farther in. The dance yeah. hall was farther yeah. in. Yeah. The tavern was at the corner. Was at the corner here. Right on the corner. This corner. Right in the same block here. Right. Between Lincoln and Beach and Lakeshore and Washington. This block. So the brewery was located in the same same area. The same, the same area as, as uh, Brother Prince and Stratton. Okay. Uh, Richard, would you like to reiterate the name of that brewery one more time, if you remember? Um, who won the brewery? I don't remember. Uh, was it... Uh, well, it has a history of... of um, Gartsky was... Yeah, he took over in 1900 and uh, incorporated it then. 
who owned the brewery in, 19, in, eight, in 1890 when it was rebuilt? Oh, oh I'm, I'm just reading here now. Oh, Darius, you said Darius. By yourself, please. I'm Dorothy Anderson, and uh, it was my grandpa, Gus Gartsky, who, with some brothers, bought the brewery in 1899 and operated it until 1914. And he uh, incorporated it in uh, 1890, no, it'd be 1900, and uh, it was torn down in 1914. Okay. Thank you. Richard Wiegand, um, a little more on the history of the brewery. Uh, this is from the History of Manitowoc County, which was published in 1881. And it says here, Christian Scheiber's Brewery. In 1857, a small brewery was erected on the site of the present one by Simon Krause. In 1866, Christian Schreiber, or Scheiber, excuse me, removed uh, moved to Centerville from Manitowoc and purchased it. He has since been its sole proprietor, erecting the present building in 1874. The brewery has now a capacity of 2,000 barrels per annum. I would like to add, okay, here's a little more about it, okay. Um, Centerville Brewing Company, I don't know the, date of this. Uh, it says, Brewers and Maltsters, manufacturers of celebrated Centerville Lager beer. Alice Krauss, President, H.F. Gooch, Manager, Hugo Mills, or Mill, Mills, Secretary and Treasurer is not listed, and it says Heike. Okay. There's a little more history that I'm just recalling here from the the uh, Cleveland Centerville history that was written, I think it was in 1974, and that was when that uh, brewery was dedicated in 1890. The governor of the state of Wisconsin came to uh, cut the ribbon or open the brewery, and the governor at that time was William Dempster Hort, who was the founder of Hort's Dairyman Farm Magazine, Dairy Magazine, which is probably the top dairy magazine in the U.S. and is still published in Fort Atkinson. Mm -hmm. Hord, Hord was from that area. Hord has uh, served as governor, I think, only one term, which was two years at that time. The reason he only served two years is because he was voted out of office by an angry German constituency because he passed the law that forced all of the public schools in the state of Wisconsin to be taught in English. <laughs> Since most of the new settlers here were Germans, there were also Poles and others here. But yeah. I bet probably none of them liked it. He was voted out of office. So we deprived ourselves of, I think, what would have been a very good governor for, for a few more terms anyway. But he went on to bigger and better things, um, starting the uh, Horace Dairy Magazine. And he also was a great promoter of dairy cattle, um, alfalfa, and, and uh, corn silage in the state of Wisconsin, which essentially built Wisconsin as the number one dairy state. Very good. Thank you. I'm Kathy Sixel, and uh, this evening Diana Cole is going to call us, uh, tell us about the Union Bee Tavern. Okay. Hike a Bee Tavern, Union House. It used to be the Union House. Okay, thank you. We've got a young lady here who has uh, been working very hard on a little project, and I'll let her start out, please. My name is Diana Cole. I went to the local tavern, Hike a Bay, and talked to the current owner. And she gave me the use of these pictures for this evening. I tried making copies of some of them, but they don't all turn out very good. Okay. But. Um, and who are the present owners? If I the present owner is Marie Ahrens and Pete Klabacek. Okay. They have owned the bar now since, well, actually, Marie owned it. Oh, let's see here. I lost my space. 1991 was when Marie and her sister Sandy bought the bar, and then five years later, Marie bought her sister out, and Marie still owns the bar to this day. Okay. And uh, they bought the bar from Matt and, Stu Matt and Sue Schneider, who bought it from Gil and Pat Miller. 
Okay, do you know dates of that transaction? Okay, Gill and Pat Miller bought the bar in 1975, and they operated it until June of 1981. Matt and Sue Schneider operated it from 81 till 91 when the current owner bought it. Okay. And um, the original people, though, um, the Schurers, owned it. They owned... They, I know they sold it to uh, Tuzi, I believe is what I read in here, and I can't find it right now. But they did, they, that family only owned it for a short time. The, the Shurers owned it the longest. And, and I was speculating on this particular photograph okay. that was taken in Haika Bay if perhaps the man standing behind the bar is a surer. I don't know, there are no names, no dates on here. Okay. Just hold it there a moment. Whoops, please. sorry. Start out with what the picture represents, if you could. Now these pictures all came from Hika Bay Tavern. Okay. This, this picture has Dorothy's father in it. We found out one person in here. Okay. And your father's last name, Urban Mill. Oh, okay. All right. And you uh, do not have uh, any idea w what that picture was it, about? We don't know when okay. or what it was. No, we don't. It's okay. just pictures that have been hanging in the tavern All right. for many years. Just let me pan across it. Okay. The young lady, Diana, has a little more information. The Hika Bay Tavern, it says, Schurer's Tavern, was in the Schurer family from 1899 to 1972. Then when it was sold, the name was changed to Hika Bay Tavern and Union House. Okay. Yeah. That's what they got now. It says that on there now. Okay. okay. A few words? Neat. Yeah, Richard, we can... Um, <clears throat> There's a couple of things about the Hecate Bay Tavern. I think in that history that Wally's got there, I'm not sure. I think the, the tavern was established yes. around 1852, originally. And I believe that it is today the longest continuously licensed tavern in the state of Wisconsin. Oh. From whenever it was licensed the first time. Continuously licensed tavern. The okay. longest one in the state of Wisconsin. This is what I'm told and I think the owners would say the same thing. Okay. I believe that's, I've heard it several times. Very good. So that was my comment about the okay. Hike Bay Tavern. Okay, thank you. I'm here with a little more information on the uh, tavern. I'm Walter Kress. Yes. And where the tavern was, to the back of the tavern there was a barn, which later housed Eddie Schurer's garage, which was Hudson and Terraplane. Okay. And to the west of that was where the dance hall used to be. Okay. Okay, anything else there you might have? Okay, thank you. Richard uh, has more information to talk about. It could be a tavern. I've got two newspaper articles here. Um, it says that the tavern was established in 1851. Oh. Oh. And that um, Hugo Shuri, who died at the age of 94, was the oldest resident in the village and the oldest tavern license holder in the state. And it mentions that during his ownership, he was issued 68 tavern licenses. He also served as the town constable, a substitute rural mail carrier, and the town treasurer. The, the uh, business was sold uh, in 1972 to John Tuesday, who changed the name to Hika Bay Tavern and Union House. That's what it says in this article. Now, this Hika Bay Tavern and Union House, the was same. that is the same? Same thing. Same thing. This is a more modern picture, and there they have the new sign with the Hika Bay Tavern and okay. Union House. Okay, could you hold that up there, please?
Germany came around and took these pictures. And he right. sent them to me. Yes. And he states, and he sent different pictures of around Haika. Yes. And this happened to be winter, otherwise there wouldn't be the snow on them. Of the dam gone. Okay. On the other side from the dam. Okay. And down at the lake. Okay. So he writes to me and he said, um, I took some pictures that I am sending to you enclosed. I must admit, I very much like the view of the little old tavern with the small balcony and the little roof over the door to the balcony and the sign and so forth. To a European, it looks very American and perhaps you should see for it to save it too with, with your historical society. <laughs> And, and what, when, that? what year was he that? He wrote this in 95. You okay. took these pictures in 95. Good, good. Thank you. Diana Beasley. I'm Diana Cole. This picture, it was taken at the turn of the century of the Heike Bay Tavern. Okay. And could you point out a couple things in that uh, at all? I'm lost. Ah, this is a, was this the church? Mm -hmm. St. George Church. Saint. The Catholic Church that was torn down or burnt down? I don't remember. Torn down. Torn down. <laughs> okay, and what year? Does it say what year that picture it was taken? It just says turn of the century. Okay, that's close enough. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just let me close in on that a little bit. We got a young lady with a picture to give us some information about. This is a similar picture of the winter scene of Heike Bay. This is probably taken, obviously, it looks like it might have been spring, spring or fall, because there's no leaves on it. Okay. On the trees, yes. it includes a little bit more of the building along the side. Okay. All right, thank you. Is there something to divulge to us here? I'm Walter Kress and my wife, Florence. We were married in this church October 26, 1946. Okay. And the name of that church again was? St. George. St. George Church. And uh, There were about two weddings after that, and then they tore down the church. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, All right. And what do you know what happened to the parishioners that they went belong? To the parishioners went to St. Wendell after. We were combined with St. Wendell at that time. Already. I see. So okay. We went to St. Okay. Now, since you were married in that church, uh, where did you go on your honeymoon, and how did you travel there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. I'm Florence Chris. Good. Uh, we went to Milwaukee that night okay. or afternoon, and then uh, we went to Indiana. Indianapolis, like some, Indiana. Okay. Some friend of his. Okay, his great. Visit. Great. Now, then you did not have a reception here? Or yes, we did. You Just did? the afternoon. In the afternoon. Okay, well. We snuck out. You stuck out. <laughs> At her parents' home. Okay. Well, that was very good history. Thank you very much. Something to relate about the church and what she was told. Uh, I'm Florence Chris, and our priest, when he married us, told us he had to pray that the church wouldn't collapse the floor because it was that rotted down below because there were so many people in there. Wow. And when my sister got married a couple of years later, he would not let her get married. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'm Walter Chris. Coming back to this picture, the yeah. brick house in the back here is still standing. It used to be the parish house. It belongs to Mr. Hansen right now. And it, I think they closed the church in 1952. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. My mother, when my, the Gardskis took over the brewery at that time, they moved from Milwaukee, and uh, they lived in that parish house. My mother, my grandma and grandpa, and my mother and her sisters and so forth. Oh. Okay. So. Very good. You know that? That was, well, when, when they came out in 1900. That was before my time. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Um, Richard Wiegand, adding to the St. George's uh, Church, says your father, Lawrence Lurkey, followed Father Schaefer in 1950 and 51. Reverend Richard Keller served the parish from 1951 to 1957. I think this is talking about St. Wendell. Um, early in 
1952, St. George's Church in Hyka closed with its members of that parish being transferred to St. Wendell. Um, okay, and then it said at a meeting of the members of that parish in 1952, it was decided to construct a new school to overcome the, the crowded conditions of the present school. And so in 1956 is when the, apparently when they built the St. Wendell School. So there was a school at St. George's, is that right? No? Oh. Oh, there might, might or, have or there was one at St. Wendell, and then there when they, they, there they might have combined been the, 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 the congregations, then they had too many children, so they had to yeah. increase the school. Okay. okay, thank you. Now by yourself, please. I'm Diana Cole. Going back to the pictures that I have collected from the Heike Bay Tavern, this one says it's in Heike, Heike Wisconsin. It's called the Germania Bandstand. I don't know where it would be, where it, where it was, but it does say Heike. All right, thank you. This was on the hill. Dorothy, where did you say this was? On the down below, uh, right uh, from the lake and then the hill up from the lake. Between uh, the road and the lake, the hill. Um, just to the south of the main part of Haika. Okay. It looks like either there was some kind of a celebration going on here. Okay. Was that taken down by the lake, do you think, uh, from what you can see there? <laughs> it looks like the lake is in the background here. Okay. Just hold a moment. I'll take a closer shot of that. Okay. I need help with this one too. This says this is the street scene in Heiko, Wisconsin. All right. Just hold it there for a moment and then we'll get some other people to look at that picture also. And it, there's some writing. Is that what it indicates there? It says, yeah, just street scene, Heiko, Wisconsin. Okay. Is, no, there, is there any names on the buildings that you can read? What would the buildings? Because I don't, I'm not real sure. Well, this is the house I live in now. Okay, just George one moment. Anderson. Yes, okay, great. And then across the street, there was my uh, grandma and grandpa's tavern and dance hall and bowling alley. All right. What And what street is that again, please? Uh, Lincoln. Lincoln? Uh -huh. And that must be east to west. Would that be correct? Right, and there's the lake. Down here is the lake. All right. And that's all filled up with trees now. All right. Was that Strachman? Uh, who were you grandparents? No, I know Strachman's. This would. This would be Strachman's right here. Okay, further down there. Yeah, right down. That one, white. Down one. to the corner. Oh, okay, I see. And these other buildings again. If you repeat that, what those two, near, to the camera were. Uh, that was my. Um, that was the. There was a hotel and a tavern and saloon in those days and a bowling alley. Oh, okay. Owned by who? By Mill, my um, grandma and grandpa. Mill. What was the name of the establishment? I don't know. The, the name is behind the tree here. I don't know what they call it. Mill's Tavern. <laughs> it was a saloon. Okay. So the building that we're talking, these buildings are on, that would be the south side of the this street? Is the, yeah, right. Okay. But then the, um, from that, the brick house is still standing, but from there to okay. the west, that was all torn down. All right. And a porch was built to the west of the house. Okay. Which you can see if you go down there. And again, you indicate that you lived on the right-hand side of the street, or the yeah, north side? Yeah, that's the house I live in now. That's the and house you live in now. And I was born and raised in that house. All right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Picture of the dam in Heike. It says it was taken in 1936. Okay. Okay. That's. Just hold it up there, yeah, please. Okay. And do you can you identify anything on that picture? Or are you going to be getting some help? Help. <laughs> <laughs> this right here 
right here is a barn that was behind my house here, which you saw on this other picture. Okay. But that was taken down now. All right. But my house would be right where this wall is. That's the backyard of my house. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, because this is dated 1936, because that's when the new this new dam was built. Okay. There's a whole story about it going down and then being built and so forth. All we'll right. Do that another connection. But okay. anyhow, here's a picture. Now, what, if I may ask, what river is this dam? The Centerville Creek, I guess Creek. it's called. Centerville Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other uh, objects in the picture to the left there of. Uh, Oh, that, those are the, that's the mill. This is the, um... What's the name of the mill? Centerville Mill, right? Centerville Mill. Okay. And, um, there's where the, way back when they built the first dams. Yes. The ground, uh, they cut, they use it for, uh, cutting lumber, and then, uh, later on, grinding feed. And the high one is where the... Flour mill. The flour mill. Okay. And both were named the Centerville Mill? Within the, the Cooney Mill? The Keeney Mill? Well, they both, the Coinies both owned it at one time. Who did that? Who owned it? K-E-U-N-E. Okay. Um, but there's a whole story to this. Do you want to go into that now? Well, as long as you're at it, we may as well do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. this is when I was rebuilt in 1936. But it, the uh, one before that um, was a wooden mill way back, and that was built in. Uh, well, first of all, my this I think um, wooden mill was built in Centerville in 1864, okay. and it was built on the north bank of the stream below the dam. Okay. And uh, then it was on wood, so they changed it. And uh, they built, they rebuilt it in concrete. All right. In uh, about 1906. In 1924, there was a heavy rain, and it washed out. What, what washed out? The 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 um, dam. The dam washed dam. out. Okay. So then there was no d pond uh, there from 24 to f to 36. Okay. And in 35 and 36, the people in Haika. Uh, had two big damn picnics to raise money to uh, <laughs> uh, build a new dam. And they had help from the Isaac Walton League of Manitowoc chapter, and, they was, and they, the dam cost $4,500. Wow. So another artificial lake was created okay. that spring. Yes. Um, the, Badger Fire Company also underwrote some of that because they could use that water for fire. And um, so then they had a de dedication in 1936, August, okay. of the new dam. All right. In 1942, it was another big washout. And on each side of the dam, the, um, they washed away. Okay. So just the center part was left then. Okay. And so then there was a kind of a makeshift bridge after that. And the dam break was a really a sad thing because uh, like that high, show this here, this high building. Yes. You see it was how oh, it was I see. messed up. Yes. The black one went into the lake. Oh my God. Really? With some chickens floating on top. And they always said that. And the chickens stayed on top all the way to two rivers. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of pictures. Just previous to, I don't know how many years before that, but they did take down the upper two floors of this high one. And here it is with the upper two floors, but then here it's washed away too. That wasn't, the upper two floors had nothing to do with the washing away. Okay, just but that's the washout that uh, resulted there. From, and, and this is in 42. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. It was quite a mess. Yes. Danger, keep out. Okay, just hold it up there a moment. All right, thank you. And here's another one. Just hold it there a moment. Okay. And, um, so in 
So then, so that was fixed. So there was a t wobbly bridge over that. And in 92, uh, it was said by the state that they should take the dam down. And um, it was removed about 92, 93. Okay. Um, first they thought they would just keep it as a, just a run over dam and they found that it was somewhat deteriorated so they took the whole thing down. Okay. And they thought there was, it would take longer to run, to get rid of the water and it was overnight and it was done. There was so much silt in there already that it wasn't that deep anymore. Okay. So now it's a pond, I mean it's a weed. A yeah. weed. Weeds! Yeah. Oh, really? Like running through it. Okay, all right. Okay, anything else that you might want to add there? Well, this would be a 1911 when there, you can see the, this, um, no, that's the other, um, here, this, 1911. Okay, uh, any uh, buildings that you can identify there? This is the house that I live in. Could, okay, and down here's there. And across the street, that tavern. All right. And that's before my folks had put um, um, a wall there. Okay. The and what year was that now, please? This says 1911. Okay. Thank you. It's a, here's a picture of further up years ago of the high mill and the pond. Okay, just hold it there. That's good. All right, and that's looking in what direction, if I may ask? Southeast. Uh, southeast. Yeah. Okay. It's and a nice lake. Yes. And, um, after it was built in 19, the second one, I guess, here. Here's some more pictures of that. Um, I don't know if that shines. Can you see through that glass? It, it, pretty good. Just hold her like that. you got a good position. That's excellent right there. That's great. Um, the lake that was made. Okay, the top of this similar picture we looked at before. Okay, this is a different one in the middle. And the bottom one. Okay, very good. Thank you. Now, I have to ask, you've got a lot of good pictures there from the past. Where did you obtain those pictures? Oh, my mother and dad. <laughs> Adam. Okay. And some of them are duplicates because we um, they wanted some copies. We've had some in various events where we've had pictures put up on posters for the Centerville Settlement had that one uh, time, one Sunday. This is a postcard. Yeah. Some it seems to another thing, years ago, mm -hmm. they made a lot of postcards. Yes. This is the below the dam. All right. Just hold and it there for a moment. And what, is there a year? Is there a year on that postcard? It would have to be before '24, around 1906, maybe. Okay. With the old uh, dam. All right. And then they uh, send these. Po there's all po Well, this now here's another postcard. This mm -hmm. is the the mill. Okay. The fire bell. The fire bell. You have a, that picture. Bill. Yeah, the, but Diana will talk about that in a little while. She's got bigger pictures. That one right there. there. Yeah. Okay. All we'll right. Go over to her on that one. Okay. Okay, and that would be a, the selection you have here. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Wiegand, uh, this doesn't have too much to do with Heike, but we are our farm is on the upper end of the watershed for the Centerville Creek. It's about three and a half miles to the west. Okay. So part of our farm drains to the south goes into what used to be called Gupshin's Lake, which is on Chafransky's property. And the, the, the uh, southern and the eastern part of our farm drains across the road, some of it through Classic and some of it through what is Schnelly now, and uh, gets down toward Kiver and, and ends up going through the village of Cleveland. Um, and it goes into Centerville Creek. So okay. we contribute to that watershed, good or bad. <laughs> well, there's two branches. One goes through LTC, too. Oh, is that the creek that That's is right. under here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one moment. Could you repeat that one again, please? Just I'm Dorothy Anderson, and one, the Centerville Creek has two branches further on. One of them goes through LTC. Now, I don't know if that's what goes through your place or not. 
Okay. That's a technical school. Okay, Richard is going to show us something on that map there. Richard, we get, uh, here's the Centerville Creek. Here's one branch that just starts. Okay, maybe it'd be a good idea to show where it starts from. Let's start from the dam, start Richard. Start from over here. Okay. This is the lake. Yes. In Michigan. Yes. And there's the dam. And the dam was uh, right in here. And there's two branches here. One goes up this way. All right. Centerville, called Centerville Creek, goes through Lakeshore Technical College. Okay. Winds around this way, goes under Westview. That's the one to your place. Goes along West Washington Avenue here on the interstate. All right. Runs here, and there's a culvert under the interstate. And this uh, continues west and uh, drains uh, Classics property, Shelley's property, and our property to the west of that. So the watershed, our farm is, is our back property is, is right on the top. Anything to the west of that goes, goes to Pigeon River goes to the west. Okay. So it's, it, you know, one of these watersheds probably starts on our farm. Okay. This one here. Okay, now can you go back to that dividing point where that is and... Uh, well, the other one. Oh, here, the other right one? Here. Yeah, where okay, that? where does that... This is uh, right behind where the cemetery is here, the, yeah. the St. Johannes oh, yeah. Cemetery. That's right. Yeah. And there's a little creek that, that comes sure. out here under center road here. Um, in the village here, and I don't know who these property owners are, but then it crosses Washington, Washington over here, and there's just a little, there's a culvert there, and this is, uh, Norbert Orth owns this land in here, this is an open field here. Okay. This is the railroad tracks. All right. Yeah. I worked for Norbert one summer, and I cultivated corn in this area here, so I know where that goes here, but okay. it starts back here somewhere. All right. Now, this other one that comes off from the north, what is that one? Right above where the cemetery is? There's another. Is that another creek? That's that's where the main, that's where the larger part of the Centerville Creek goes. Okay. The one that goes through Lake Shore. All right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, with that, then we'll uh, take a break here and uh, we'll continue on from there. Thank you. Uh, Richard. Uh, nothing to do with. <laughs> getting, we're getting a little off the subject again, but but we were talking about the two churches in in uh, Haika. Um, the two Lutheran churches were combined in 1923. So the St. Peter's on the Union Road and the St. St. Johannes Church in Haika would have been closed and torn down probably not too long after 1922, 1923. The other uh, thing I was going to ask, uh, we have some people here who might know, the St. Johannes Cemetery was used to be two cemeteries, right? It was St. George's and St. Johannes? It still and is, isn't it? Still it still is. is. Okay, and it, I, I think there was, was there a fence in between? No. Because there was a rumor that there was a couple, one was Catholic and one was Lutheran. It still well, is. It still is. Still is. And, no, no, there was a couple of pe people, okay, that were married. One was Lutheran, one was Catholic, and when they died, one, the one party was buried on the Lutheran side of the fence. Sure right. And the one was married was buried on the Catholic side of the fence. Mm -hmm. They were buried next to each other, but they were separated by the oh. cemetery line. And later, that fence was removed, and now they are not uh, now they're together. Well, there, okay. there, well, was, I think it's possible. there was not a fence, but I know I'm sure that's how she's buried too. Is it? Mm -hmm. He's on one side, and she's on the other. That she often told me. But they're not together. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one was. But no fence. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Kathy Sixel, and this is a photo of the St. George uh, Cemetery, but it, uh, in 1907. Okay, just one moment. Okay, and that's the one that was located in Haika? That is located in Haika. All right. And this, and well, next to Jane, uh, St. George is St. Johannes Cemetery, mm -hmm. right? And this is a picture of the Lutheran Church, and I think it's 1908. All right. That was located in Haika Bay also. That was a church that Richard had just talked about. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'm Kathy Sixel, and we will be continuing with Diana Colt telling us about the uh, Haika Bay Tavern. Thank you. Lady here, who would like to introduce herself again? And I'm Diana Colt. Okay. This picture came from Haika Bay Tavern. Okay. It says on the buckets, CFD, Centerville Fire Department, is what we think it's what it means. 
Am I seeing that that would be like a bucket brigade type of fire department? Yes. That's what they did. And do you have an age on that at all? No date. Unfortunately, no date. Okay. This next picture all right. is also a fireman. Okay, just hold it right there. That's fine. Doesn't say anything on here about firemen, but they're dressed in their yes. uniforms. And I, and I see now want. instead of buckets, it looks like they purchased some kind of a pumper. Am I sure correct? Sure enough. Could somebody take a look at that? And yeah, it is different. This one has. Well, what we had there was the original pails. Can he look at it here? And you keep looking, he's looking at yours there. Okay. Doesn't look like a steamer. Does it? Well, I don't know. There could be. A steamers usually had bigger pipes. Yeah, but they may have done this manually. Oh, we'll have Richard, Richard Wiegand. Yes. Um, if this is Willie Taple, which I believe it is, this oh. person here, mm -hmm. he was born in 1879. All right. And on this photograph, uh, he was probably in his 30s. Um, so that would have put this photograph maybe around 1910 or 1915. Okay. okay and but they were still using horses. They weren't using, maybe he was a bit younger. Maybe this is early century, early part of the 20th century, early part of the 1900s. Okay. They were still using horses. Today. I don't see any motorized vehicles here, so I don't know how long okay. they went with that. So the horses pull the, the unit itself, but now the mechanics of pumping water, what do you feel was done? We're not sure, but it almost looks like there isn't any steam engine or anything attached to this. It may have been a hand, hand pumped. Uh, okay. Um, Could you hold it up there just a little yeah. bit so I can get a good shot of that pumper? Okay. This is what you talked about. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Kress, we yes. have some new information. This is a one-cylinder gasoline-powered pump. Okay. It was used until 1928 when they brought the first Peter Persh fire truck. Okay. And Bill Table was the fire chief. Bill Table. Now, this Mr. Bill Table. Bill Table, known as Implement Bill. <laughs> he ran the implement store. He ran the implement yeah, the store, store, Cleveland Hardware. Oh, okay. Is this down in Haika? No. No, this is Cleveland. Cleveland. This is Cleveland's truck. Oh, okay. All right, so you I indicate that this is powered, uh, the pump was powered by, by one cylinder gasoline engine. Okay. Whenever they had a fire, they had to go on and get a battery first to start it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I have Walter Cress. Yes, sir. And then I can't tell you what year it was, but Jerzeski's barn burnt down and they had to get a battery first to start the engine to pump water. <laughs> but didn't that start because somebody held a magnifying glass on a piece yeah. of paper? Paul Rosina. Yeah. What was that for? When they what? When you say they had a magnifying glass he on a piece. had a magnifying glass and was playing with it to, with the sun. Yes. And oh. He started, he started the fire. No kidding. Oh. 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 Foster child or something. Foster. Anna Kolb. Now this picture is in Haika. It has the the bell at the firehouse that was located in that area. Okay. And the bell is used as what to get. The firemen to come to Get the. The firemen to come, I would assume. <laughs> okay, all right. There was no sirens at that time. No. <laughs> all right. Very good. Anything else you've got to show us? More pictures. Okay. These are just these are pictures from Hika Tavern again. We do not know who they are. All right, but that's fine. But it's people from way back. Yes. That went fishing. Man. Somebody know who they are? Well, we think maybe. Okay. Mr. Sure. Oh. My guess is it's, it's from another picture I've seen. That might be, might be Hugo Sure. I think it's Hugo Sure, don't you? Could be. Okay. Well, All right. We think so. Okay, there. Repeat that again, Diana, so that we can. We think that this is Hugo Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And his children. All right. And he was the gentleman who did what? He owned the Haika Bay Tavern. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. This photo was behind 
one of these pictures in the frame hanging in the bar. When Marie took them down so that I could bring them here, she found this behind it. Whoa. It is not a photograph, it's a drawing or painting or whatever you would call it. Really? Okay. A portrait. A portrait. Portrait. Think. And you feel it as a sketch? It's not a painting per se. I, I'm not a authority on that, but it. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks like a, some kind of a penciling. Uh, Draw, yeah, it's a drawing. Drawn. Okay. And oh, all right. This same situation, also behind one of the pictures really? that Marie took down. All right. Could have been the owners. Nobody knows. Wow. Or the owner's parents. You know, yeah, we don't so really know. Script. Just okay. speculating. And again, would you repeat how this all you located these again? Th th this picture was behind one of the Cle one of the Hika Bay photos hanging in the bar at Hika Bay. It was like used as a uh, the background thing to hold yeah. the photo in. <laughs> My gosh. Well, thank you very much. Some information. When I was smaller, about 1937 and 38, Ray Hintz and I worked in this feed mill for $2 a week, buying oh. feed. <laughs> what was your job there? Handling bags and, okay. and in the back here is a chicken coop. We used to manure the chicken coop, gather eggs. Okay. And you had, well, we were talking before, you indicated there was some change in the buildings uh, that was in, on that photo. Was there... Something different than what we heard before, at all. Or am I mistaken there? Well, part of that, bar, that mill was gone later. This mill was taken. The top two stories were taken down. Okay. All right. And at one time they made moonshine in the basement here. Oh, they did. During the probation. <laughs> During the probation days. Okay. Well, they had the right ingredients. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And I remember hanging around in that mill with my father when he was getting feed around and mixed there. And I remember something like uh, other than water power. And I thought it was electric. And uh, I wonder if Wally might not be able to fill in some blanks there about the type of power that they use. Okay, just one moment. Okay. I'm Walter Chris again. Yes, when sir. the original dam went out in 1924, it was water powered. Yes. When the dam went out, they got a one-cylinder diesel engine from the Cleveland Electric Company, and that ran until they burnt out the bearings, and then it went to electric motor, and they went bankrupt with the electricity was being so high. So oh, the mill was closed for, oh, 10 years, 20 years. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Until... Then he put electric electricity back in, and he couldn't afford it again, so that's when he went back to diesel power. Okay. And that's when I worked there. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Worked there, and uh, who was the owners at the time you worked there? Hugo Ron was, I'm Walter Kress. Yes, sir. Hugo Ron was the owner that time, and Ray Hintz and I worked there. That's okay. when we got $2 a week for... Okay. And what years was that? Late, late 30s? In the late 30s. All right. Very good. Thank you. I'm Kathy Sixel, and uh, could you please explain this photo of the uh, mill pond? This is Walter Press again. Yes, sir. This is a photo of the mill pond looking from the west toward the east. Okay. And what Richard talked about before about the split of the creek, and this is where it would be. Oh. Where one creek branches off, and where the other one goes the other way. Okay. Can you identify any buildings that are there right now? Well, that... the mill is right here, what we had All right. about here. All right. Okay. You can see the church. Okay. Church steeple here, yeah. Yes, sir. On the other side. All right. So that's taken right where the split takes place? It would be about where the split would take place. Okay. Which I'm... would be in back of the cemetery. All right. Big splits here behind the cemetery? About, what is it, uh, not even a quarter mile off of the lake here? Splits right here. And then one branch goes kind of to the west and then to the south, and the other one goes north. Okay. And then proceeds around here. All right. Make sure tech and then goes west about three, three miles or something. West. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. This, um, what do you call it, conglomeration of pictures is taken at Hika Bay 
during more recent years. Okay. Uh, during the late 70s, when Gil and Pat Miller owned the bar, they had a mannequin in the corner. Everybody called him the old man. He was dressed like an old sailor, and he became quite an attraction. Okay. And people still talk about him today, but unfortunately, his head fell off, and it was porcelain, and it smashed. Oh, no. Somebody fell on him. <laughs> oh, and the middle photo is Gil and Pat Miller, okay. taken in December of 1980. That was shortly before they sold the bar. They oh. sold it in 81. Okay. And well, that picture and there, we got to turn, I in, believe. Yeah. During, during the time that Gil and Pat owned it, the fishing was really good at Hike, in the Hike Bay area. And uh, Gil would have fishing contests every week. He had fish boils late summer, and this one is of the fish boil party going on. Okay. And, and, and yeah. in this corner is one of the big fish. That was caught in 1978 by Dave Barnes. The fish weighed 32 and a half pounds and was 41 inches long. Oh. Now, I'm no expert on fish, so I'm not real sure what kind it is. <laughs> okay. King yeah. salmon? I don't know. Yeah. That's a kind I've often heard about. And that picture on the bottom, is that Oh, and down? this one. This looks familiar. This looks like one we have in one of the other pictures. It's just the front of the Hika Bay Tavern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So in the, my right-hand side was taken in 1979. It's the owner, Pat Miller, her son, Brad Miller, and a friend, Jeff Brust. Okay. And <clears throat> the next one on the top is the bartender, Gil Miller. Okay. Then on the bot in the middle here was another big fish caught. It was in the 70s, but it does not give a date or how big the fish was. Okay. And this picture with the guy with the big hat, he actually owned um, York's Bar. He happened to be in Hika Bay Tavern on New Year's Day, this was. Okay. In uh, 1976. Okay. And on the bottom again is the owner, Patsy Miller. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Now this picture doesn't have a date on it, but we looked at this one before. Yes. And from this picture, Gil got the idea to do a similar photograph, which I wish I would have brought the original photograph along. Okay. But this was taken in February of 1979 of Gil's crew of patrons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and most of these people still live in Cleveland now. Okay. Come to the tavern. Huh? And come to the and tavern. come to the tavern. Oh, yes. <laughs> And your husband is on. And my husband He's is on. on there. There. Well, He's on there. Well, point him out. Point him out. Where is he again? This is my husband. Second Bill. one in there from the left. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Good. Great. Okay. That's the end of the recent stuff. This was during Gill's fishing contest. It doesn't give a year, but I know it's in the late 70s. It says that um, this particular fish. Um, top prize at the Hika Bay Tavern annual fishing contest. Okay. Gary Kratchnik, I'm not sure of the pronunciation. He's from Manitowoc. He caught this 32-pound Chinook salmon. It was the largest entered throughout the entire season at Cleveland's Fisherman's Headquarters. Okay. Very and uh, the little fella on there was the guy's son. Okay. Very good. Thank you. That's Sixel, and next on the program we will have Wally and Florence Kress, and they're going to tell us about the big brick factory that was in Cleveland. Okay. Okay. I'm Wally Kress again. Here's a photo of the brickyard that used to be where Lakeshore Metals is now. My dad worked in the brick factory at one time. It's owned by uh, Gus Witt. Okay. But we don't know the dates. Do you know what, what street is that located on? The end of Beach Street. End of Beach yeah. Street? The end of Beach Street. Jefferson and Beach. Okay, very good. And I think uh, I've got Richard over there. He's going to point out on the map for just a moment. Richard Wiegand? Yes, sir. Uh, the location of the of August, was it August Witt? Gus. Gus. Gus of Witt, the brick yard, brick factory. In uh, Hika, at the end of Beach Street here north of uh, East Washington, 
Beach Street going over to Jefferson. It's right off of this road. It's in this area here. Oh, okay. Bigger area. No, no, it's right in there. Right in here. Right Did you see the date? I don't know where the date is. Was this operating in the 1800s? Yes. Or was it? There? Yeah, it was. It's probably so. I would think so. And they were producing Cream City Break. Is that you were there, right? Mm -hmm. This is a postcard sent in 1911 of that picture. Before that. I'm Walter Cress again, and the brickyard was owned by Clarence. I think everybody around here knows Clarence Witt, the banker. It was owned by his dad, Cuss Witt, Gusta. and it was called Cream City Brick. Okay. The cream colored brick. All right. And the mills and churches and everything around here was built with those bricks. All right. Very good. The school too. School too. The arrow school. Okay. Okay. Here's a picture of the people that worked there, but we can't identify the people. Okay, just that. hold it there for a moment. Now, on the picture, I see they're calling it Centerville Brick and Tile Company, but yet they do call it the Cream City. The that bricks was were bricks for Cream City. City. Okay, very good. Dorothy Anderson, uh, when the clay was exhausted from that pit, then the brickyard was moved to. Cleveland, so where was it up there? Yeah, West of the know. railroad track, and operated until 1920. West of the railroad? Now, you also, you indicated that they got the uh, material for the brick. From, was it local material? Oh yes, that's why it was located where it was down in Haika, because they cut that clay there. Oh. And when that was exhausted, they moved, I suppose, to the next place where there was some clay. Okay, okay. Richard Wigan, I just wanted to mention, uh, Frederick just mentioned that the silo on their home farm was made out of Cream City brick. Okay. When was it built? Can't say. Early 1900s, sometime, likely. Okay. Um, and I wanted to add that we've got Cream City brick on our farm. The uh, smokehouse and the, and the milk house mm -hmm. both would have been built around 1898, 1900, and then we had a silo behind our barn, which was recently torn down, but the upper part of it was also Cream City brick. That was put on there in 1910. Okay. Uh, there's Cream City brick all over Centerville mm -hmm. that probably originated from, from, from these brickyards. It's incredible the amount of clay that those guys put out. Wow. <laughs> Did anybody know anybody that worked there? My dad. Your dad worked there? At one time. Though. Okay. And what capacity did he have at that point, or what did he do? I'm Walter Cress again, and my dad worked at the brickyard, and I know he talked about the brick coming out, and he used to cut it with a string. Okay. With a string? That's before my time. So okay. They also baked the brick there, I guess? Yes, they, had, they burnt it for probably a week at a time. Okay. It was fired with wood. Okay. Do you remember what your, did your dad ever indicate what he made uh, also per hour or per week? No, he didn't. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Richard Wiegand, um, I know the approximate dates of a couple of Cream City brick buildings that are that are older. One of them is the uh, Shafransky house just to the south of us, Raven's Nest, which is an antique, who's an antique dealer. He said that that house was built in the 1870s and that's made entirely of Cream City brick, wherever it came from. Okay. And the Walter Klesik farm, which is now uh, Utley, South of there, that's Cream City Brick, and that dates, uh, I was told, to the 1860s. Wow. Now, Walter Klesik's farm did have its own uh, clay. I'm told by the current owner that uh, and there's, a, there's a space out in the middle of the farm where they used to dig out Cream City, you know, light-colored clay, which they may have used to build that house there. Okay, very good. So there was another source of brick in the area. Not very large, but some... Okay. okay. Thank you. Kathy Sixlet, I would like to speak a little bit about the bricks too. When we had our celebration, Richard called me from Madison and told me he had a friend and they live on the Bud Jacoby farm and their last name is Fritz right now. Mm -hmm. And well, I called the people up and they had lots of bricks in their uh, barn and they piled over bricks so that they could find a brick for us and then they chiseled off the mortar and they put it in acid and it said, I think, Centerville Bricks, right? And it says A. Cone. A. Cone. A -H -N, mm. I think. This is on the side of the brick. Centerville. Centerville. So, A. Cone. A. P. 
So this impression was in the each brick. It was on the brick. It was on the bricks, right. Well, then I asked these people, where did you get this from? And they said, well, we got it from a house on County Trunk X, and it happened to be a house that we had owned. They had remodeled and torn off the porch. But uh, so I had to take the bricks back after the celebration, so we couldn't keep them for our library. But Harlan and Laverne Albrecht told us that they had uh, triple walls, and when they tore their house down, maybe 30 years ago, they've got the, uh, all the bricks are buried on the Tom Price farm. So if we ever want to dig up a brick, <laughs> we'll know where to go. <laughs> oh, very good, thank you. <laughs> Richard Wiegand, uh, we did keep one brick. Uh, this Fritz fellow gave us a brick. Centerville Settlement has it, I think Janet has it, uh, with the uh, name on it. Um, the uh, Harlan Albright uh, house, I think, was torn down in the 19... Yeah, it might have been the 1960s sometime. I don't remember the original house there. And, and that was buried along the creek across the road on the Tom Price property, something they wouldn't allow anybody to do anymore. They were filling in the creek. <laughs> they changed the, the root of it or something so they could <laughs> fill the bridge or something. I don't know, but they, the, all that brick is buried in there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Richard Wiegand, uh, the people who built the buildings on our farm um, one was William R. Tapel, no relation that I know of to the William Tapel who was the owner of the hardware store. And I've tried to establish a relationship and never, have never been able to do that. And the other uh, mason, local mason in the area was August Schmidt. Mm -hmm. And between Tapel and Schmidt, they, they, they did the woodwork and I think the masonry, the, the brickwork, on our farm around the turn of the century. Oh, fantastic. Well, they weren't related. Kathy Sixel and the house that we live in was built in 1910, and that was also out of those bricks. But I never, uh, we haven't remodeled very much, so I don't know if there was a brick, you know, that with a name on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Chris, again, that acorn that you talked about, that brickyard was in back of Witt's brickyard, and A stands for Albert, Albert Cohen. That makes two brickyards. That okay. makes two brickyards, two brickyards, one behind the other. Oh, really? Okay. Was there um, a different style of brick from each one, or was it both kind of the, both kind of the same? Same thing. Okay. Very good. The uh, Suxy store, and it was located on Lincoln Avenue in Cleveland. Later, it was owned by uh, Hintz. It was known as uh, Eddie Hintz's store. And, and what street was that on again? Lincoln Avenue. Okay. And then right above the door... It says post office. The first post office in Cleveland was located in the store, and I have two different uh, dates, 1856 or 1855. And um, I really don't know much about it. Mr. Soxy was a shoemaker, and his brother worked in the, they had like all general merchandise. Maybe the rest of you can help me with the store. Frederick, I know knows, or oh, Wally. Thank you guys. Better. We can uh, help me on this. Um, the Soxy store, was it located west of Beach or east of Beach on Lincoln? West. So it would have been right on this corner? Not quite. Second door up. Second, second door up. Second door up. The first was the house belonged to it, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. one building. One building. Okay, so there would have been a house right here on the corner of, of uh, Beach Street and Lincoln. And then the next building to the west. It was all one building. It was all one building. One building. Okay, I was working for Chris and Kathy, uh, the owners of, of New Age Computers and the Red Arrow School, and I was planting a tree for them a couple of years ago, and I hit a foundation there. Okay. About, uh, two feet down. Okay. And I was wondering what that was. Yeah. So that apparently was that building. There's, mm -hmm. there's some foundation under there. Okay, very good. I have a little information on the Soxy store. Yes, sir. This is a picture, pictures of it. The small door here was for the post office, and the bigger one was where you went into the store. And the residence was the next one here. Okay. I can still remember getting a gallon jug from my mother and going up there for a quarter and getting a gallon of vinegar. Okay. <laughs> and the top picture? They're, they're both the same both picture. Both the same, the same thing. Building. Are they at the same time? Are they taken, or is there dates on those pictures? There's no dates on them. Okay. But again, it's the same view? It's the same view. Okay, and going from the west to the east. Okay, and repeat that one more time. The doors again, please. The small door to the west here was the door to the post office. Okay. And the larger center door was the door to the store. All right. 
And while you told me they had a dog, right? And his name? The dog came when Eddie Hintz had it, and the dog's name was Schnapsy. Schnapsy, huh? The dog came in what? The dog's name was Schnapsy. Oh. It was when Eddie Hintz had the store. And Sally Rutherford told me that the floor was real slanted in the store. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I knew about the store. Oh, okay. Inside the store, um, I just remember uh, there were two separate doors, but inside the store there was a big oh, doorway, uh, so you move freely. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose at one time in postal regulations they insisted on a separate door or something, but you move freely between and depended where people were standing and talking as well. Okay. And sitting. Do you remember about the floor being slanted? Oh, yeah, was, yeah, sure. Which way did it slant? Do you remember? Every way. <laughs> <laughs> was it a plank floor or what? It was a wooden floor, and I suppose the building had uh, settled. <laughs> it was a pretty old building, and I remember it. <laughs> okay, yes. Dorothy Anderson, um, in connection with the uh, post office, they had shoe repair shops there, too. And I think that was Frank, that was the other fellow. Frank was the shoe Frank. So well, if you went this way, you got to the post office, and then right in the same room, there was the shoe repair. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Is this the picture you had of the store? Okay. Hold that up there, please. Okay. Now, are all those buildings part of that uh, no, shoe this store? this is my... No... This is my dad's printing office, and this okay. is Hobo Longstanding okay, at a post. Okay, know. start out with the first picture one more time, please. This is the Heike, the store, oh. Sox's store. Sox's store. Okay, and then we go over to the next picture that in the was middle. That my dad's printing office. Okay. Down was the street about a half a block. And did, he had a name for that office, that printing? E.R. Mill Com the Printing Company. E.R. Mill Printing Company. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what did you print or... Oh, he printed dance posters, wedding invitations, postcards, uh, and he did have a, a he did a lot of mail order work too, so that he'd have a monthly magazine that somebody would send okay. him all the material, and he would print it. Okay. And um, uh, that type of thing. Okay. Did yeah. you ever work there yourself? Yes, we had to go and fold papers. Okay. They, they were big sheets, and by the time you folded them the right way. And it was 16 pages. And then he had a big cutter. You'd pile them all up, and then he'd cut a bunch of them at once. So it had 16 pages. Oh, you had to staple them for. Uh, okay. Yeah, after they're folded, you staple, and then he cut them. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know, Hogulung. That just says it's Hogulung. Oh, okay, I just hold it up name. there a minute. We'll we'll take a picture of this. Yeah, I remember the name. And he's standing by the Haika sign, right? Yeah. And his name is Hogulung. L U N G. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I never saw a sign like that. Ed built the printing of it. He only built one floor. All right. And then afterwards, he built the second floor on top of it. Oh. Now, do you know when this uh, came to pass, as far as the date uh, when this was completed or done? No, I don't. I okay. I find it in the, one of those. And he, he called it the same thing? Yeah, Mill Printing Company. All right. Could it hold that just one moment, please? That's the one floor. All right. It looked like some kind of a basement was under there also. Yes. There was a basement under there. Okay. And, and then when he built the second floor, and now my sister lives in there as a home. Oh, okay. She's got a basement, the first floor, and a second floor. Okay, very good. And again, the location is where? Uh, about, well, it's on Lincoln Avenue, and it's... Uh, down from the store, about two doors. Across from the, across the tavern, huh? Across from the Hike of Bay Tavern. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Marion Kellner lives in this remodeled, remodeled. printing office for that's made into a home. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Kathy Sixel and um, Florence Cress will tell us uh, about a butcher shop that used to be in Cleveland. It was her uncle's. Okay, Dorothy. Florence, I'm sorry. Florence. I'm Florence Chris. Yeah, my uncle George Schwartz had a butcher shop. It was next to east of Dazzler's shop. shop. 
and that was moved up to Cleveland, and it's um, been in its barber shop now. Oh, okay. I guess they used it as a butcher shop mm -hmm. first, or was it uh, for the barber? It was a barber so shop. it is presently Benin's Barber Shop. Benin's Barber Shop. Yes. Okay. He made the best school. <laughs> <laughs> and the the butcher shop was located on what street? And you say they moved Lincoln it? Lincoln Avenue. It was on Lincoln Avenue. Yes. And um, then they moved it up to where the where is the barber shop now located? Um, Grant Street. Okay. Okay. Do you know what time of, uh, that this took place? No, that I don't remember. Okay. There's a picture. I know they always talked about that. This one she said. They moved that up there. It became the, what is it up there? The first building, Dorothy. The very first building. The first building, the second one's the bar, the blacksmith shop, and the third is the printing office. Going up toward was it? Sure, the printing the office. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff there. Sure. Okay. Okay. This just right hold here. it. Okay, just one moment. Okay, uh, just point to the various things there on the picture if and you can. That's uh, Dassler's uh, garage. Okay. And, uh, the mill. All printing right. Printing office. What's next to that? Okay. And, and across the street, the Catholic Church. No. There's the church. Okay. Like Point that out. Church. Okay. And the tavern is there. Yes. And who lives in that corner house with the street there now? It's Groovy at that time. Uh, Shads. Shads live in there now. Okay. All right. It looked like a very pleasant street to be on. Look very nice. And what what way are we looking here? To east the west. this is east. This is west. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So what do you see there now? Uh, there's a uh, there's a horse buggy right there. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I think uh, gentleman had his hand up here. I'm Walter Cress again, talking yes, about Saxon store. Yes, sir. We used to have a pot belly stove with a tin can in the back with peanuts. You could go in there and get a handful of peanuts. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Please. Uh, what um, it just occurred to me that, that that store was quite small. People would be surprised. And I remember that uh, because of the size, Eddie kept a lot of his stock. He had to go through a door to to the back. Now, yeah. you might remember that better. One or two doors there were, he'd be gone. <laughs> Come back. Now, as far as the items that he sold, uh, what types of, just roughly, what types of things did he well, sell? Well, here, as I remember, it was all kinds of groceries, meat. Mm -hmm. Meat also? Sure. Okay. Because I, I remember, especially during World War II, when they had to have, when they had to post how many points for different cuts of meat and for different canned grocery, canned food, and things like that, that was all displayed. Like, like a rationing type And of course, thing? there was the usual penny candy counter that kids drooled over. Okay. Very good. It was very small. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Richard, we're ready. Richard, we have, I thought I would have uh, just mentioned where the, these buildings were that these people are talking about. Over here. Yes. On Lincoln Avenue, east of Beach Street. Um, Dorothy, you can tell me, starting from the corner here, down... Okay. To, okay. Shad's uh, home. Shad's home is here. Yeah. Next is my sister Winifred Eggers' home. Winifred Eggers' home. I've got, I've got then the the um, printing office made into a home. That's Marion Kellner. Marion Kellner's home. Then it's the let's see. Blacksmith shop is now. Uh, Dossler's. Dossler's. Where was the location of the uh, of that meat? Uh, We're coming. That'll be the next okay. one. Okay. All right. Then the next one. And that would have been the the uh, meat market. Okay. The meat market. Cleveland. And then after that, there's two more houses? No, one. Wait, oh, wait, wait. Just, yeah, right. Yeah, one was the end. And Solomon's. What about, what about the, sure, the, the two the, brick houses? There's two, two brick, brick, there's two cream safe brick, brick houses. houses. Where was the dance hall? That would be and the that next. That would have been down in the corner here. No, well, that dance hall, but he's talking about the other one. The one that's not there, I'm talking about. Um, was that, was that in there, west of the house? Just looks like two Yeah. Stories. After the... Um, Butcher shop. butcher shop. Then there would be the 
ta the hotel and tavern and dance hall and bowling alley. And then then that would be the brick the house. Yeah. Then the next little brick house is still there. It's a lot in one block, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that's a very, very crowded block, even if the buildings have been removed. Now, what was the name of the owner of the butcher shop again? Do you know Schwartz. the name of the Did you say Schwartz? Schwartz, okay. And that was moved up here west of the tracks. I believe this would have been where Bennett's is now. Yeah. That's on Grant. I think it's yeah. on Grant. Yeah. Would have been right in here, next to what was Pippers. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, a grocery butcher yeah. shop here. Meat market. Meat market. Okay. So it's right in here. That's where that uh, Schwartz's uh, meat market was. Did you know the name of the food market? Did you know the name? I'm Florence Chris, and this is another picture of the Bassler uh, garage. Okay. And I was taken to what? The Dassler's place. Oh. Um, it was the blacksmith shop. It was shop. a blacksmith shop at oh. one time oh, okay. years ago. Okay. So, but I don't know who the people are. On was this a single person that owned that, or was it a brothers? or? Louis Dassler, then Louis 19, Dassler. was the third from the left. Okay, could you show me where that would be then? Okay, just one second. There's got to be a grandpa to Larry who owns the place now. Oh. Great grandpa. Great grandpa. Could you repeat that one more time again? That what we're looking at for a gentleman that we know is there? That's Louis Dossler. He owned that place at okay. that time. Okay, all right. He's the great grandfather to... Larry Dossler, who owns the place now. Okay, very good, very good. And then that was a blacksmith, and then it, blacksmith it got shop. converted to something else later? Yeah. 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 The, uh, oh, it's a garage. That was a garage. Yeah. garage. Yeah, they, they had gas and uh, repaired cars. Repair. Sold oh. Where they sold cars. Yeah. Okay, very good. That's right, they did sell Thank you. The before the war, and uh, then after the war, I don't think he had Nash at all anymore. But then soon after that, he had the Kaiser Fraser uh, franchise for a while. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. That was Kathy Sixel, and I have a question of Wally or Frederick Jacoby, and I'm wondering, uh, earlier in the evening we talked about a sure that had a, a garage, and would this Dossler garage have been right across the road? They both would have sold cars. Okay, just who wants to handle this one? Okay, okay. Wally? I'm Walter Kress again. Uh, what Kathy talked about, there were Cherie's old Hudson and Essex, and Dassler started out with Plymouth and then went to Nash, and after the war he went to Kaiser Fraser. Okay. So they both sold cars at the same and gas at the same time. Okay. And I worked at both. You did? <laughs> what was your job there, please? Funky. <laughs> <laughs> Unexperienced mechanic. Okay. What year? About well, after the war. It was oh, before the war. Before. I worked at Cherie already when I was 13. And you so worked at both places? I worked at both places. Wow. I think he was a double agent. A yeah, double agent. <laughs> <laughs> no. Florence, you have something there? Sure, I got something to say as long as he brings this up. My dad went down to the garage and uh, he didn't know me. And my dad walked in there and he said, this was in January, and he talked to him, and then Mr. Dossler said to him, well, who was in there? He said, my future father-in-law, and he didn't know me. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I met him in June, and we got married in October. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm <laughs> still So you, you worked for your father-in-law? No. no. He was a customer. He was a customer. Oh, was okay. A customer there. Okay. Okay, <laughs> very good. Thank you. We have a picture of Dorothy Anderson, and here is the, the Dossler garage with the oh. gas tanks in front. Okay. I don't know what year this is, but uh, these are pictures of pictures. Okay. And maybe you could relate what you have on other pictures on that same. Oh, this is Strachman's store. All right. On top. Okay. And they have. No, there's no filling station there. And then here's the uh, Catholic Church. This all right. is all in Heike. Okay. And the name of that Catholic Church again was what? St. George. St. George. George. George Catholic Church. Okay. 
This is taken in Cleveland. Of course, we don't have any dates, but if you note the hats, it's got to be sometime in the early 1900s, I would think. Okay. This is taken at the, uh, the train depot. Okay, and this is in Cleveland now? In Cleveland. And that was on Hickory? Yeah. Hickory Street? No, Hickory, okay. Yeah. All right. And where are these pictures from now? This particular picture belongs to Hike Bay Tavern. Okay. This next picture is also of Hickory Street. This came from Hike Bay Tavern also. All right. Can you point me out something there that you can see? Uh, like a livery stables or... Uh, is that the train station there at all? It says... You know, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay. Let's work on that one a little bit. Name and... Uh, Richard Wiegand. Okay, Richard. And what We're are we gonna, This at? is Hickory Street um, before it was paved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a long time ago. All right. This, I think this was the depot, right? Uh, Wally, can you just watch this? This is Dersh's feed mill. Um, on this side of the street here, help me a little bit. This, I believe, is Stoltenberg's store here with the, the pillars here, right? Or is that farther, farther back? Further back. Oh, that's further down I here. I think that one. This one here. No. What's this on the side here? That must be Gordigo's delivery stable. Yeah. Or is the next one the delivery stable? This one down here? One of those is the delivery stable. Okay. That was right next to Stoltenberg. What's this false front uh, building here? That must have been the livery. I don't remember it. So. And there's another building here that has a porch on the front of it with some... I'll see that. That's <coughs> Elmer Culp's yeah. house. That's Culp's house. Um, this is the one that okay. we yeah. um, um, so okay. there too. And then we, we went out. I read it from Elmer Culp's house. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Uh, Whichever building this is, if we could count them, I suppose, might be a, a good way. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the livery stable was south of the store. Huh? Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, and then Elmer's house. Yeah. Which? Elmer's who? Elmer Kolb's house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, which still stands. The livery sure. stable yeah. was first yeah. after the store. Yeah. The house is there. Mm -hmm. Stores. And then, okay, stores point here. out where they are. Stores well. here, right? This tall one. And the livery stable is this one, the short one, right? Am I getting that right? I think Wally thought the store was farther down. Remember, that's that, that store burnt down. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't look like it does now. But, oh, no. but right across, we, I lived in that house, which belonged to Elmer Cole. And he was in one half, and I was in the other. Mm -hmm. After Carl Amstead, he lived there many years, and then he bought Sedlick's house, which is mm -hmm. his first name. That's right. The agent. Can't think of his name. Mm -hmm. We are directly across from the depot. Okay. And um, that house was had a strange arrangement as a result of one time being a hotel, and I think that was owned by Stoltenberg. Ah, I got it mixed up again. Uh, not Stoltenberg. Um, Grotigut. The Grotiguts, I think, were involved in that. It's the best of my understanding. Okay. There were there are hallways and stairs in unusual places, and then it was made over into duplex one time. Yeah. But but it would take some studying here, careful studying, to, to track back from something we can identify because it's you know those buildings have been made over. But the, uh, at least the Elmer's house was Elmer Culp's house was directly across, okay. straight across. We All looked right. out our bedroom window right over the depot. Okay. And the second night we were married, we just about got thrown out of bed when the, oh, when the Ashland Limit, when the Ashland Limit came through at ten fifteen. <laughs> Was that a was that a choo choo? Was that a you know? A, oh, Steve, a, a cold, and it cold went. Yeah. <laughs> I also remember they had a big platform there too. Remember that? Loading dock. Oh, loading dock right by the depot. Okay. All right. Okay. For sure, okay. and that chain didn't. They just would. It would pick up its mail bag, you know. Oh. I don't no, know. Where, where was that mail bag located? At the depot or across? No, no, at the depot. At the depot. Yeah, right. That was part of the job of the. Stage agent and his helpers. Okay. Could uh, do you see that being placed up there at all uh, when well, they put the mail up there? Did you see it over happen? here? It's it's the same. It was the same way all over at, at uh, rail stations. You know, they had this pole with this special kind of a. Arm on the top. Arm on the top. Mm -hmm. 
And that just, the bag hung on that arm? And, and the train had the arm sticking out? And that train was going. I, I, I can't judge how fast, but I'd say at least 50. Oh, wow. okay. That one Miller boy always got yeah. the bag. Oh, what was his name? Oh, one with peanuts, walnuts, and all. Oh. Pe say that again, please. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that again, please? I know the story. <laughs> That's how I just hold it a picture. <laughs> now, could you repeat that one more time about the uh, Miller, you said? That I can't remember what his real name was. So. But uh, the nicknames they had for him? Peanuts. Peanuts was Raphael. Peanuts was Raphael. Yeah, that was Raphael. Peanuts, that wasn't the guy. Peanuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, and allnuts. We're all nuts. That's terrible. That's terrible. Peanuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, and allnuts. That's cute. That's cute. Thank you. The Miller. And he was. Yes. I think he was the third one, that boy. He would always take that bag off of that, mm -hmm. wherever that Okay. For a long time he did okay. that. My great-grandfather, Louis Wiegand, mm -hmm. uh, was, took, the, took the bag off or delivered it in the 19, uh, early 19, uh, late 1920s, 1920s, early 1930s. Okay. Richard Wiegand? Yes, sir. My great-grandfather, Louis P. Wiegand, after he moved to the village, he, 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 when his first wife, Agnes Lutze, died, he married Anna Wagner. Yeah. And he lived in that house, that little gray house on the corner there across from Stoneberg, where, where, um, where uh, Oswald lived. Oh. And, and one of his jobs in retirement was to, was to either take the bag or deliver the bag of, of uh, mail. And he did that every day in the afternoon or whenever the train came through. I was told that, that he did that. He lived across the tracks mm -hmm. over on Hazel Street. Okay. Very good. So there's a postal worker in my family. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Some information. I remember the first Other post office of the was road. over the Outside railroad the track. That would be Hazel Street. And it was in the old Bergner house. And the second one was across the street on Hickory. And that was in Wagner's Tavern. And then the third one was the one that was built I think that's Grant Avenue, and uh, I don't know what the other street is. Yeah, okay, it's on the corner there. I haven't right? lived here long enough to know all the streets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Let me point out two things. One, that last picture that we talked about uh, that uh, Diana had here, where that location was on the map, and then whatever else you wanted to point out. Okay, the, the picture that we were looking at, the last one there, would be on Hickory Street. Uh, west of the tracks in this block here. Okay. From Washington, it would be north. Okay. And it was a little bit down the street. Somebody was standing there and taking a photograph and was catching the buildings here, maybe on the two thirds of this block on this side and on the east side okay. next to the tracks. Okay. Which way was that picture taken? To the north? It was north. taken looking north. Looking north. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Then the post offices that yes. Marie was talking about, one of them would have been. Um, Across the street in this block here, the Burger House, I don't know which one that is. Yeah. The corner house is the Oswald House. It was about across from the depot. So it would have been maybe in one the, second of, one. the second one off of that corner of East Grand and Hazel Street, uh, going to the south. Okay. That was the first post office in the village of Cleveland. So All right. That I know. Oh, I don't know for sure. Yeah, well, we don't know where it, first, where, where it started. But, and then the, the post office moved across the street the Hazel in the Wagner. Edward house. Wagner had the tavern that time. There was a tavern there, which is Hickory House now. On one, one side. Okay. And when I was growing up in the 1950s, I remember being in there, yeah. oh. that post office. Mm -hmm. And then the current post office is located over on Grant and Juniper. Oh, Juniper, yeah. On the corner here. Yeah. So it just basically moved from here to here to mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Never was up in St. Michael, huh? Or is that another one? Oh, that was yeah, another, correct. That was, that was another, another one. one. That was a different yeah. post office. Yeah. Well, we'll get into a post offices as a yeah. whole topic. Mm -hmm. So and two other topics that I we have to address yet uh, is the Indian scare and the peers. The what? The peer and the Indian scare. Oh. Those two things we'll have to talk about yet. And then whatever else anybody can think about, I got. Richard Wiegand? Yes, sir. Um, I suggested uh, to that we, in the summertime, we go out on the cemetery, the St. Johanna St. George Cemetery, and walk around and talk about, because the, the names on the gravestones will remind us of a lot of things. Sure. Yeah, okay. And 
talk, great. We just walk around there, spend an hour or two walking around and talking about the people that are on that cemetery. And then look at some of the buildings around that area. We could even walk up and down Lincoln Avenue. Sure. Which is a very great. historic mm -hmm. street. And just point at some, you know, look at current buildings and, and mention what they are. Okay. We do that on a weekend sometime in the summer. We'll try to schedule that. When it's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kathy. Kathy Sixel, and I was thinking perhaps we could do that in July now for our next meeting and pray for a sunny day and do it on a Sunday afternoon when Richard is up here from Madison okay. and see if we could do some of those things then. Mm -hmm. Opinions from everybody? You want to wait for two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't make Mondays very easily in the no. summer because I don't teach on Mondays anymore until the fall. So I'm going to be in Madison five days to have it on the weekend or okay. a Friday night or something. I don't know, but, uh, you know, early Friday thing? Well, I can't. I mean, I can be here Monday if I have to. Well, no, but, you know, you have to think about it. The other thing is I, I have constantly, I have a conflict with another group that I belong to called the Sheboygan Area Land Conservancy, which also meets the first Monday of every month. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and Diana Cope also works, and she wouldn't be able to make it during the weekend in a daytime either, and so we'd have to be on a weekend. Oh, yeah, during the day, yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't be I, 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 I get home at six. Hey, Excellent. I want to thank out. everybody for coming, and everybody sure did a good job on their research. We got a lot of information tonight. So, and uh, try to think of as many subjects for next time, too, as you can. <laughs>